Oxford. Uh, okay. Oh, scary. so Ivan. My director of debut. Yes. <laughs> So Ivan, um, the movie so, so Scary is your directional debut. Why a horror after writing uh, several animated films? Well, the joke here is that I actually always preferred horror. I just landed in animated movies. But the, um, there is a very thin line, you know, between fairy tales and horror movies. I mean, if you look at the original Brothers Grimm stories, they're freakishly gory. So uh, the, the distinction of stepping from a family film to a to a horror film wasn't all that gigantic. How oh, influential has Sam Raimi been in your career? Uh, is as a producer for the for the film. Yes, a uh, huge influence. I mean, first of all, Sam wasn't on board when the studio uh, hired me to direct the movie, and I was terrified because I'd never, as you say, never done a film before as a director. And when they told me they were going to pair me off with this guy, I it was a huge sigh of relief because. Sam is not only a legend in all films, just horror movies mostly, but all films. He's also a really, really, really nice guy. So he was the grown up in the room. He kind of took me by the hand and taught me how to basically make a movie. And one of the biggest lessons that if there's any aspiring filmmakers out there, they should know was the importance of pre-production, the importance of the time before you actually say action for the first time. That two months, let's say, if you're lucky, pre-production period, is the last time you can make mistakes and not pay for them. So he was rehearsing everything, uh, rehearsing the camera moves, not just the actors, um, rehearsing the makeup team and have them apply the makeup over and over again before we actually got on set so that they get as fast as possible. Uh, those were the major lessons. Uh, I have to tell you real quick, though, there was another major, major film influence on this one. Um, and it was Italian, and uh, the movie, the movie's kind of a love letter to uh, early Mario Bava movies. It's uh, Black Sunday. It's also the whip and the body because that's a color film, and we're in color, and we we emulated the lighting patterns of the whip and the body a lot. So it's a, kind of like a little tip of the hat to Mario Bava and the movies he was making in that period. Perhaps um, horror movie Mario Bava, um, uh, um, Dario Argento. What was the first horror movie you saw? Oh, um, that, I tell you this, my favorite horror movie of all time, which I saw when I was 13, was The Exorcist. However, I know I'd seen something else. Um, I, it's probably a Disney movie from 1980, which is a horror movie. Uh, what, the, the only one, to my knowledge, that they did, which is The Watcher in the Woods with uh, Betty Davis, which is almost Lovecraftian, and it's a movie that Disney's kind of now going, oh, we made that? Uh, forget it. But uh, it, it definitely scared the hell out of me when I was a kid. Uh, so that's probably it. Yeah, not only is a horror, but it's also linked uh, to reality. Uh, it's true. Yes. Uh, well, the whole uh, subtext of fake news uh, is a very major theme in our movie, and it made it very topical. And what's extraordinary, by the way, is that that theme existed in James Herbert's novel, Shrine, from 40 years ago. Uh, so, you know, fake news has been with us for a while, um, but it's never been as prominent or as powerful as it is today. So without wanting to get too pretentious, our film is absolutely first and foremost a ghost story, a scary movie. But its definite understory is what happens when a journalist whom we look to to deliver, an inf to, uh, to deliver the truth and inform the public uses and twists the truth to serve a personal agenda as what happens with Finn in the story. And it's what demons are, metaphorical demons are unleashed, and how does a community suffer from that? Jeffrey De Morgan, Carrie Elvis, the cast is very interesting. How did you choose them? Well, Jeffrey, very specifically, because um, I wanted somebody who matched the aura of Kirk Douglas. So Kirk Douglas in Ace in the Hole is for 99% of the movie, a bad guy. Uh, he's a morally corrupt guy. But the reason you keep watching and the reason you keep hoping that he gets redeemed is because he's Kirk Douglas and he's sexy and he's fun and he's charming. Jeffrey has made almost like a career out of playing ch bad guys who charm the hell out of you. I mean, obviously Walking Dead and uh, Watchmen are the more prominent examples, yes. but he's got this swagger and he's got this grin. So even when he's lying to your face, you're like, you know, I, I like the guy, David. Um, Carrie, uh, I had written the part of Bishop Giles. Uh, I described him as a matinee idol priest who's very photogenic and he's more of a politician. And Carrie has this, just, he's, he's 
dashingly good looking. I mean, he's Errol Flynn and he knows how to use the camera. So I, he was very much a choice of what kind of a bishop would sell the church to the public in the 21st century. He's more of the showman. He's more of the salesman. Um, every single actor in our film, I am super proud of. Uh, of course, Bill Sadler is, uh, who plays Father Hagen, is an actor's actor, and you can see why Frank Darabont hires him endlessly. Uh, but uh, clearly, we're all very, very proud of Cricket Brown. It's her very first movie. Uh, she had done an off-Broadway play, and that's it. And so um, she auditioned. She was awesome. We hired her, and every single member of our of our of our cast, who are experienced actors, were all blown away by her talent, her professionalism, everything. I mean, this girl's gonna go places. My Ivan, my last question is: Do you believe in the supernatural or ghost, devil, angel? I, I, <laughs> My answer is I want desperately to believe. Um, I will say, I, I, you know, I'm Greek. I, in Greek. When I grew up in Greece, I was an altar boy. So at that time, totally. The older you get, it's organized religion is definitely something that I've kind of lost touch with. I want to believe in the spiritual, though. I want to believe that there are forces, benevolent, and if there are the benevolent ones, then it stands to reason there'll be the malevolent ones. But forces out there that we do not see that exist and that there's a bigger picture. I want to. I don't know that I do. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Evan. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank, you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Amal.